thoughts on the, the kind of the last weekend and, and kind of what's, what's coming up, I guess, moving forward? I, you learned yeah. something from every meet, but what did you think? Yeah, you definitely learned some from me. Uh, I think what I learned is that they were really ready to race, and we had just a great weekend. Um, the women beat uh, Davenport and St. Cloud both days, and um, – great environment on the pool deck and great support and some absolutely awesome times and performances. Um, we got um, three GLIAC Athletes of the Week af this week after last weekend, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, Leo Knowles is the Men's GLIAC uh, Swim Dive Athlete of the Week, um, I guess just Swim Athlete of the Week. And then um, Abby uh, got the Diver of the Week, and um, uh, one of our freshmen, Annika Wright, got the Female Swimmer Athlete of the Week, and I think she is ranked right right now, and the rankings will change because some teams haven't raced or um, that kind of thing, but she's 10th in the 1,000 in the country right now, and Leo is 4th in the country right now in the 50 free, so we're super excited about all of that, and now it's time to keep training, and we will race again in about three weeks. Um, we'll go down to Saginaw and Grand Valley, so we'll have our first road trip. Yeah. And does having that, that, like, that time off to mm -hmm. kind of, hey, these are the things that we can take away, um, is it a yeah. good thing, is it a bad thing? To have you know, to I'm like? really excited about our schedule this year because I think sometimes we get to where we maybe race um, – too early and now we really get to set into another training block we had a really good training block had a deload week and they and they felt good and, and swam well and raced and now we get to kind of set up the next two and a half week of training block and get ready for going to grand valley and saginaw so i'm pretty excited to make them really sore this week that'll be that's the that's the goal yeah. and then i know coach sometimes leading up to races mm -hmm. especially you know team races sometimes things change um, yeah do you find yourself not worrying about that too much and knowing that your team is deep enough to say, hey, if somebody can't go, I know I have this person or I have this person? Yeah, you know, I do feel, especially on the women's side, we um, have a lot of versatility. I'm pretty excited about knowing that I don't always have to have someone in the tour to fly because we have three other people that can step up in that. And it's nice to be able to give them a shot to do some different things because sometimes um, they get locked in in a dual meet and having to do the same event all the time. Um, but we really have some versatility to be like, okay, I don't have to swim Annika in the 1,000 because Annika Geyer, one of our other freshmen, can can do that. Or Chell Font, our fifth-year senior, can do that. And um, I'm able to swim her in her IM, which she's also very good at. So having that versatility um, with our sprinters, too, where uh, maybe I can have – I don't have to have them on the relay. They could be in two individuals. Um, we have a lot of pieces to play with, which – when we go to conference, they can do four individual races. And when we're at dual meets, they don't always get to do four. They might just only get to two. And some of our athletes only did one individual and two relays last weekend. So it gives us a shot for them to kind of mix up their schedule and get to race all these different events before um, the Calvin Invite, really, in December. And then, yeah. Coach, with that versatility and kind of changing up, yeah. is it sometimes a breakout for an athlete in a certain event? Yeah, that yeah, and that gives us another opportunity to say, oh wow, you know, I didn't, didn't, I knew they were good, but you know, maybe they really stepped up in something. So um, for sure, I think we saw uh, some great sophomore swims too, from um, especially on the men's side. I think we had a lot of sophomore men really step up and kind of show us that, like, okay, you know, they're they're a contributor, they're going to be in. Um, so I think that's another opportunity when you get to put them in different events that, um, like, okay. That's another piece that we can have. So, yeah. And we're going to need that going into Grand Valley and Saginaw because they're both good teams in the GLIAC. So we're going to need some versatility. With those two racers yeah. in the top ten, does that kind of put pressure on the team or the racers as a whole when they go into an event? Um, no, I mean, I think that they are – I think, if anything, it kind of gives them confidence, you know, that they're up there. But they also know there's – it, it juggles around a lot during the season, and there's so much more involved in that. Like some teams, um, this might be technical, like put on a tech suit. There, there's these swimsuits that you see the Olympians wear that are super tight and, and like have like kind of shorts on them. And some teams race in those a lot, and we don't necessarily race in those, and they can make a big difference. So um, I think when you're really looking for a better 
look is after everybody's mid-season meet. So probably mid-December gives you a better idea. Everybody has done some races that have rested in those technical suits. So that give you a better idea of where they are. So it's going to change a lot. Yeah.